<laughs> oh no! Oh, it's coming! It's coming! What? Global warming! Hey friends, I'm sure just like little kitty, you two are confused by the sudden melting of snow. Well, unfortunately, this is bound to happen. And there will come a time when there will be no snow left at all. And it's all due to global warming. I'm sure you must have heard this term before. So today, let us explore what does global warming mean and its effects on our lives, environment and the entire world. Zoom in! So, what is global warming? Global warming is the term used to describe the rising of the average temperature on Earth. In other words, it's the process of our entire planet heating up. In the last century, the Earth was warmed by an average of 1 degree Celsius, which might not sound like a significant change, but it could have a big impact on the people and animals around the globe at present and in the future. It is assumed that by the end of the 21st century, global warming is likely to cause an increase in the Earth's temperature of around 2 to 5 degrees Celsius. And this change in climate will make our weather more erratic, forcing many species into extinction and making life much harder. But the important question is, what causes global warming? Well, the factor responsible for the change in climate is the phenomenon known as the greenhouse effect. And what is that? Since the Industrial Revolution, humans have been burning large amounts of fossil fuels such as oil and gas producing huge clouds of carbon dioxide. The gases released into the atmosphere during this process act like an invisible blanket trapping heat from the sun and warming the earth. This is known as the greenhouse effect. Not only that, deforestation is another huge reason for global warming. As we all know that trees absorb huge amounts of carbon dioxide from the air and release oxygen back into it. But sadly, many rainforests are being cut down by humans to make furniture, paper and to clear the way for roads, oil mines, dams and habitation. So due to a decrease in the number of trees and forests, the carbon dioxide remains in the atmosphere, adding fuel into the fire and warming the globe. And if this continues, there will be severe consequences as a warmer climate could affect our planet in many ways. Like there will be more rainfall, seasons will be unpredictable, the sea ice will shrink, thus resulting in the rise in sea levels. But the most crucial question is, how do you prevent global warming and how can you contribute towards saving the planet? Well, you don't have to do anything big. Tiny changes in your own home can make a difference too. For example, try switching your normal bulb to energy-saving light bulbs. Take a walk or bicycle instead of using the car for short distance. Always turn off the electrical items when you're not using them. And most importantly, recycle and reduce your food waste. All these little things can make a huge difference and will turn you into a superhero. Trivia time! Did you know every 40,000 years, the Earth changes position and this causes climate change? Also, the Earth is still in an ice age which started 2.5 million years ago. We are in an interglacial period called the Holocene. 
hope you enjoyed today's episode. Until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out. Ah, never mind. <laughs> well, don't be shocked, little kitty. This melting of snow is a result of extreme climate change the world is struggling with right now. <coughs> now, the time has come to do something about this catastrophic condition ASAP. So, let's do our part by learning about a topic that is the need of the hour and address this world-altering issue called climate change. Zoom in! So, what is this dangerous phenomenon called climate change we keep hearing about? In simple terms, climate change refers to long-term shifts in temperatures and weather patterns of the Earth. These shifts can occur due to natural events like minor variations in the Earth's orbit or switches in the Sun's magnetic field. But in the past few centuries, human activities such as burning fossil fuels, driving gasoline cars, deforestation, etc. have been the primary driving force behind the drastic changes in our climate. Yes, that's because these activities generate greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide and methane that act like a blanket covered around the earth, trapping the sun's heat and increasing temperatures. As a result, the earth is now about 1.1 degrees Celsius warmer than it was in the late 1800s. And it's getting worse with the passing of time. And as everything is connected in the Earth's ecosystem, this temperature rise is further influencing other things and causing intense droughts, water scarcity, severe fires, rising sea levels, ocean acidification, flooding, melting polar ice, catastrophic storms and declining biodiversity. In turn, this will affect our ability to grow food, put our health at risk and limit our resources to build houses. So, no wonder this has become an existential issue as the entire human and animal lives depend on it. But the good news is, there is still time to take the necessary measures to effectively tackle this problem. Fortunately, in recent times, due to protests from various environmentalists, there has been an increase in awareness about this issue. As a result, many countries have agreed to reduce their fossil fuel consumption and adopt cleaner and renewable sources of energy such as wind and solar. However, protecting our world is not limited to these bodies, but is the responsibility of each and every individual, including you and me. And for that, you don't have to do anything big, but tiny changes in our lifestyle can make a difference too. Yes, for example, try switching your regular bulb to energy-saving light bulbs. Take a walk or bicycle instead of using the car for a short distance. Always turn off the electrical items when you're not using them. Recycle clothes and electric items as much as you can. Plus, reduce your food waste as rotten food can release methane. And most importantly, grow as many trees as possible and be the superhero the world needs at this point in time. At the same time, Sharing the video with your friends and family will also contribute to passing this vital message to as many people as possible. So, I request you to please do the needful. Trivia time! 
Did you know that the concentration of carbon dioxide, CO2, in our atmosphere as of 2021 is the highest in human history? Also, 11% of all global greenhouse gas emissions caused by humans are due to deforestation. Hope you learned something world saving today. Until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out. Never mind. Bad guys! Well, I know an iceberg became a bad omen for the Titanic. Still, despite all the hurdles, we need to preserve them more than before, little kitty. Why? Hmm. Good question, my curious cat. Hey, friends! As we know, the gradual climate change is causing all the ice to melt. But have you ever wondered what will happen if it happens overnight? Well, in today's episode, let us consider this melting situation and answer an icy cold question. What if the ice melts away? Zoom in! Presently, 10% of the land area on Earth is covered with ice, including glaciers, ice caps, and the ice sheets of Greenland and Antarctica. Usually, it would take hundreds to thousands of years for it all to melt away. But have you ever wondered what will happen if one day you wake up and found out that a drastic climate change has caused all the ice to melt? Let me tell you something, my friends. If it ever happens, it's not going to be a pleasant sight. Yes, as we know, about 10% of the Earth is covered with ice, which is around 5.8 million square miles of our planet. So, if all of it were to melt suddenly, the first thing we will notice is the rise in the global sea level that would go up to 230 feet high. This means more than half of the Statue of Liberty will be submerged into the water. Even worse, this steep rise in water level will partially drown all the continents, adversely affecting the cities located in the coastal region like those in Australia and Southern Asia, which will force up to 40% of the world's population out of their houses. And it's not just the Earth's surface that will be in turmoil, but something equally disastrous will occur below it as well. Yes, all the rising oceanic salty water will infiltrate groundwater reserves called aquifers, leading to its contamination and destruction. Because of this, we won't have any fresh water left to drink. Apart from all this, ocean currents will also change their course, affecting the lives of marine animals. With no time to evolve along with such a massive change in the sea, most aquatic and polar animals will eventually become extinct. Even those who manage to survive will have to migrate to a better place for habitation, decreasing marine food supply for humans. Not only that, but this change in the sea current will bring an extreme change in our climate as well. Yes, suddenly the dry regions might start to receive heavy rainfalls and the places that receive significant amounts of rain will turn into deserts, leading to a severe famine condition. And it's not just the water, land and climate that will be affected by the sudden melting of the ice, but it will negatively impact the air as well. Yes, as ice uses higher CO2 concentrations to melt, without the required amount of snow to consume it, 
carbon dioxide will accumulate in our atmosphere, causing difficulty in breathing for all living beings. Next, we will see that the flow of wind will change as well. You heard that right, my friends. With the absence of glaciers to deflect the sun rays, there might be an over-evaporation of water leading to an increase in the formation of rain clouds, resulting in heavy pouring, which may cause massive floods around the globe. This change in the environment will also cause oceanic hurricanes, leading to even more floods. Because of this, even the most minor earthquakes will push the water so hard that it could cause a tsunami. All of this will result in a need for massive migration, which we might not be ready to tackle at any cost. So, the world we live in will eventually collapse completely. The good news is, this isn't happening as of now. But the bad news is, if we keep burning fossil fuels indefinitely, global warming will eventually melt all the ice and within 5,000 years, the Earth will have no ice and possibly no life on its surface. Think about it. Trivia time! Did you know the ice on the Greenland and Antarctica is made of fresh water? Yes, so when it melts, that's about 69% of the world's fresh water supply that's going straight into the oceans. Hope you learned something new in today's episode. Until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out. Never mind. Too hot. Yes, little kitty. There's been a rise in global temperature in recent times. And depletion of the ozone layer is one of the factors behind it. Ozone layer? Yes, little kitty. Hey, friends. I'm sure each one of you must have heard about the ozone layer in school. So, in today's episode, let us go beyond the atmosphere and explore this invisible protective shield that surrounds the Earth and tackles a globally important question. What is the ozone layer and what's causing a hole in it? Zoom in! Hey friends, have you ever wondered why do your parents ask you to apply sunscreen before stepping out into the sun? Well, that's because of harmful radiation known as UV rays or ultraviolet rays emitting from the sun. But despite their fascinating name, too much exposure to the sun's UV rays can increase the risk of skin cancer and can severely affect your immune system. Not only that, but these rays can even harm the single-cell organisms, plants and aquatic animals. But don't you worry, my friends, because between the sun's harmful rays and life on Earth lies an invisible pale blue protective shield we call the ozone layer. But the critical question is, what is the ozone layer? Well, for that, we need to travel up, up, all the way into the atmosphere, where some oxygen molecules that contain two atoms absorbed energy from the sun's UV rays and split to form a single oxygen atom. Then, these single atoms mixes with the remaining oxygen with two atoms to form a thin layer of oxygen gas with three atoms to form the ozone layer. This layer is about 3 to 5 millimeters in thickness and surrounds the Earth, shielding and protecting the planet from harmful radiation coming from the sun. Everything was safe and fine for billions of years until 
In the 1970s, scientists discovered that this thin layer of gas is slowly depleting and evidence revealed that certain man-made chemicals were responsible for it. Yes, my friends, chemicals such as chlorofluorocarbons, also called CFC and nitrogen oxide, coming out from a wide range of industrial and consumer appliances, mainly refrigerators, air conditioners and fire extinguishers, below towards the ozone layer and begin to destroy the oxygen molecules resulting in thinning of the ozone layer which is popularly known as the ozone hole. But fortunately all is not lost yet as with increasing awareness about the harmful effect of CFC and other chemicals, the production and consumption of such substances have decreased to a significant level. And as a result, the ozone layer is slowly getting healed and getting back to its original form. But as a responsible person, we should play our part to serve the ecosystem as well. So, what can we do to help? Well, there isn't much we can do about the CFCs that were released already. But there are some things we can do now and the first thing to do is spreading awareness about its harmful effects amongst our friends and family. The other essential thing we can do is if you have air conditioners or refrigerators more than 20 years old, make sure you replace it with a new one and be sure to have the old one disposed of properly. Trivia time! Did you know the word ozone means smelly in Greek because the gas has a strong odor. Also, CFC molecules are highly stable and can last for up to 100 years. Yes, and unfortunately, this gives them plenty of time to find their way to the ozone layer. So, let's do our best to stop them and the right time to do is now. Remember my friends, as the great Carl Sagan said, and I quote, The hole in the ozone layer is a kind of skywriting. At first, it seemed to spell out our continuing complacency before a witch's brew of deadly perils. But perhaps, it really tells of a newfound talent to work together to protect the global environment. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. Until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out. Ah, never mind. Oh no, I forgot to bring the sunscreen lotion, Kitty. And I don't want both of us to fall prey to those harmful UV rays from the sun and get painted with a tan. So, let's go back and bring it. UV rays? Yes, little kitty. UV rays. Hey friends, as we carry our uninteresting journey back to our house, let us fill it with some interesting discussion and learn about the harmful radiation coming from the mighty sun and answer a burning question. What are UV rays? Zoom in! The sun, the great glorious golden sun, the one that provides energy to living beings, warms us and turns night into a beautiful new day filled with hope and enthusiasm. But like anything else, our sun isn't perfect as well and has a dark side to it. Yes, my dear friends, and UV rays are one such disadvantage our sun possesses. But what are these UV rays everyone fears more than an asteroid hitting the Earth's surface? Before we answer that question, we need to learn about an important thing with a fancy name that sounds like the next sci-fi movie. 
and that is electromagnetic spectrum. You see, when we think of light, you probably think of what your eyes can see. But the light to which our eyes are sensitive is just the beginning. It is a fragment of the total amount of light around us. Yes, right from radio waves, gamma rays, and you won't believe, but most of the light in the universe is invisible to us, meaning we can't see it through naked eyes. How ironic, isn't it? So, electromagnetic spectrum is a term used by scientists to describe the entire range of light that exists including the invisible UV or ultraviolet rays that are produced by the mighty sun. When the sunlight reaches the Earth's surface, it consists of three types of radiations. The infrared light that we can feel as heat, the visible light that allows us to see the surrounding things, and last, comes the UV radiation, the ever-powerful one that can't be seen or felt by anyone. But when it comes to feeling the destructive effects of the sun's rage, the UV radiations are the main offender. These rays come in three forms, ultraviolet A or UVA, ultraviolet B or UVB, and ultraviolet C or UVC. Although UVC is the most destructive of them, fortunately, they are absorbed by the Earth's atmosphere, which is the protective layer of gases surrounding the planet and does not reach the Earth's surface. And it's mostly the UVA rays that we get exposed to on a daily basis. And at times, UVB rays can penetrate or come through the atmosphere, causing damage to people who are exposed to these rays. But the vital question is, how do these seemingly innocent radiations cause so much of damage to us? Well, for that, we need to zoom into your body to look at the upper layer of the skin called epidermis that protects you from many external forces. Just like that, when the visible light coming from the sun hits your skin, it reflects off the epidermis. But the UVB can penetrate through your skin into the epidermis and reacts with the DNA and thus damaging it. Although a low level damage can be repaired, but overexposure to UVB rays makes it hard for our body to maintain it and thus leading to many skin disorders including skin burns, inflammation and can even cause skin cancer. On the other hand, overexposure to UVA rays can also lead to cancer, but it is mostly responsible for causing wrinkles Yes, it can penetrate to the deep layer of skin called the dermis, which has the scaffolding of molecules such as collagen that gives your skin the elasticity. But all the flexibility finds it hard to fight the UVA rays as it damages the collagen scaffolding, causing wrinkles and making you look older than your age. But don't you worry about it, my friends, as there are very easy-peasy, lemon-squeezy ways to protect ourselves from the wrath of the sun. Yes, just limit your time in the sun, wear glasses. Using sunscreen can reduce the level of damage caused by harmful radiation. And you can continue to live a healthy life. Live your time! Did you know, the bees can see the UV rays that help them to get the direction to the pollen as the rays are reflected on the petals. 
Also, elephants can sense that their skin may get sunburned and hence they guard themselves by covering up in a protective coat of mud. Now, that's what we call being self-aware. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. Until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out. Ah, uh, never mind.